last time uh, we went over course outline and we went through some basic definitions of matrices, matrix multiplication, matrix addition, and so on. And then we started discussing uh, vector spaces, and uh, in particular, we discussed about um, <clears throat> yeah. So we were discussing about linear combinations, and in particular, we discussed uh, uh, about linear independence. So uh, linear independence is a very very central concept to. Uh, matrix theory and linear algebra. Um, and so I'll just reiterate that a set of vectors are linearly independent. If the only linear combination of this set of vectors that gives you the zero vector is the all zero combination, that is all the coefficients must be equal to zero. That's the only way you can reach the all zero vector. Then we say that that set of vectors are linearly independent. Otherwise, they are linearly dependent. That means that there is a non-trivial linear combination of those vectors where some of the coefficients are non-zero, but which when added together with that weighted combination gives you the zero vector. So today we'll discuss uh, uh, many related concepts, specifically basis, dimension, and last time somebody asked me about uh, linear transformations when I was telling you that linear transformations are actually equivalent to matrices and matrices are equivalent to linear transformations. So the question was, how do we define what is a linear transformation, which uh, then is related to a matrix? I'm going to talk about that. <clears throat> then I'll talk about some fundamental subspaces associated with linear transformations or matrices. And if time permits, we will also discuss about the notion of the rank of a matrix. OK, now um, to recall, um, we say that if you remember, we just put down the last thing we discussed the last time on the previous class. So a set of vectors V1, V2 up to Vn span a vector space. V, if span of V1 through Vn is equal to V. That means that every V, um, every, every vector in capital V can be written as a linear combination of V1 through Vn. <coughs> So basis. So a set of vectors V1 through Vk is uh, said to be a basis for a vector space V if it's both linearly independent and spans the set V. So in this case, we, we call this a spanning set. A vector space V if it is both linearly independent and a spanning set. So uh, some comments about the basis are in order. First of all, the basis is not unique. You can define many different bases um, for a particular vector space. And uh, every V in this set, spanning set V can be, uh, sorry, every V in this vector space capital V can be uniquely written as a linear combination of the basis.
obviously this is not true if you um, if you add or delete vectors from the basis <clears throat> if you add vectors to the basis there are more than one way in which you can represent a vector that belongs to the vector space if you delete vectors from the basis there are points in v which cannot be represented as a linear combination of the remaining set so also every vector space has a basis and uh, we say that another way to say what i just said is in fact it's there are two popular phrases uh, a basis is a maximal independent set and a minimal spanning set So maximal independent set meaning that this is the maximum number of linearly independent vectors that you can pull out from this vector space V. In other words, if you take a basis and you take any other vector from V and add it to that basis, that set of vectors now becomes linearly dependent. And it's a minimal spanning set in the sense that if you take away any vector from the basis, then it can no longer span the vector space. There will be some points in the vector space which cannot be represented as a linear combination of the remaining set. So another way to say this is that a set of uh, uh, an independent set of vectors in a vector space is a basis if and only if no proper superset of it is linearly independent. Also, a set <laughs> that spans V is a basis if and only if no proper subset of it still spans the vector space. These are things I've already said. I'm just saying it another way. Okay, now, now very, uh, so very another, another concept which is related to the basis is that a vector space is uh, said to be finite dimensional if there exists a finite set of vectors in V, which is a basis for V. So in this course, uh, we will completely or exclusively look at finite dimensional vector spaces. Um, if, um, if, uh, if, the, if the basis for a vector space does not have a finite number of uh, vectors in it, then we call the vector space infinite dimensional. So for example, if you take the set of all polynomials in one variable, say x, then that is an infinite infinite dimensional vector space because you can have x, x squared, x cubed, and so on going all the way up to infinity. So um, uh, if you take the set of all polynomials that you can define in x, then um, the, the, uh, this, is, uh, this, spans, this forms a vector space which is infinite dimensional. But like I said, in this course, we will focus on the finite dimensional vector space. Most of the results for finite dimensional vector space actually do extend to infinite dimensional vector spaces. But in some cases, you'll have to do, some, you'll have to make some extension arguments, uh, which is beyond the scope of this course. So here's one result related to basis. It's called the basis theorem. So what do you think it says? Anybody want to guess or does anybody know what the basis theorem says? 
sir uh, the number of the vectors uh, present in the basis is actually the dimension of the vector space yeah exactly so that's the that's the theorem so what it says is that if some basis of a vector space has a finite number of elements then all basis of the vector space have the same number of elements and this is called the dimension of the vector space is denoted by dime of okay so essentially uh, if you you find a basis for a vector space and i find a basis for a vector space um our the basis that you found could be different from the basis that i found but the number of vectors that you that you have used to form the basis is going to be exactly the same as the number of vectors i have used to form the basis so just to i mean illustrate this idea that uh, uh, there could be different bases but they'll have the same number of vectors so um, first of all you know if i take the space r to the n this has dimension how much n n n so if i take for example the case where n equals 2 uh, then 1 0 0 this is one basis and so is 1 minus 1 and minus 1 1 and so is 1 2 3 5 so all these are bases they will span r2 and you see that they all have two vectors each Sir? yes the second example is not a basis right they are linearly dependent yes okay now there now it's a basis thank you <clears throat> okay um so if i take c to the n this also has dimension n in the field c okay and uh, it has dimension 2n in field of real numbers of course if you take this n dimensional um, real space this vectors uh, e1 e2 up to en which are like this over here where basically ej has one in the jth position and zero everywhere else is this is called the standard basis okay so now um, let's uh, let's prove this uh, this result okay so how do we prove a result like this that uh, if some basis has a, a finite number of elements then all bases of the vector space have the same number of elements and this is called the dimension of the vector space okay um, so the proof is by contradiction so suppose 
there are two i found one basis and you found a different basis and they happen to have a different number of uh, elements so so suppose v1 through vn is one basis and w1 through wm is a different basis of v and uh, without loss of generality i can assume that n is less than or equal to m otherwise i can simply switch uh, what i call v and what i call w so i can assume n is less than or equal to m without loss of generality so as a first step so basically this has fewer vectors than this what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this bigger set here and replace one of these vectors with say v1 and then i'll replace one other of these vectors with v2 and so on that's what i'm going to do so first we can replace one of the wi with v1 and still have a basis for v um so why is that true that's because suppose v1 was equal to alpha 1 w1 plus alpha 2 w2 alpha m w n i can always do this because w1 through w m is a basis for this vector space v and v1 to v n are also vectors that sit in v so any if i take v1 it's a vector that's lying in v and so it can always be represented as a linear combination of w1 through w m and obviously not all these alphas are going to be equal to 0 because if i make all the alphas equal to 0 then the right hand side is 0 and the left hand side is 0 okay so this is uh, this is true so not all alpha is are 0 so if alpha k is one of the guys who is not 0 then wk can be then written as uh, 1 over alpha k times v1 minus all the other vectors so in this series there is no wk okay i have skipped wk and all the other terms are here so i can just i'm just rewriting this first equation here okay so um basically what this gives us is that so notice that these are this is just a linear combination of all the other w so i can replace wk by v1 and still have a basis for this vector space v so there are two things here um so we can replace wk by v1 and still span the vector space v and the second is that this set of vectors that we get w1 wk minus 1 v1 wk plus 1 all the way up to wm are still linearly independent okay why is that true simple if you take a linear combination of these and you get zero and suppose that's a non trivial linear combination then all you have to do is to substitute for v1 it's some linear combination of all these w's and what that will end up showing you is that there is a non trivial linear combination of w1 through wm 
which gives you the zero vector. And therefore, this set of vectors W1 through Wm are not linearly independent. But that is no, that is that was one of our starting points that this is a basis, meaning that this is a linearly independent set that spans V. So this you can show by contradiction. I would like you to try to show it, but what I was saying is it's a, it's a simple argument. What you do is you take a linear combination of these vectors W1 through WK minus 1, V1, WK plus 1 through WM and you set it equal to zero. Suppose that there is a linear combination of these vectors which gives you the zero vector. And if that linear combination is a non-trivial linear combination, it means that these vectors are linearly dependent. So you start by saying, suppose it's true that I can take some beta 1 w1 plus etc to beta m w m, where there is some beta k which is multiplying v1. And with not all beta i is equal to zero, which gives you the zero vector. Then it, or what you do is you substitute for V1 from here. V1 is some non-trivial linear combination of these Ws. And you substitute for V1 into that equation involving beta 1, W1 plus etc. up to beta m, Wm equal to zero. And you manipulate that equation a little bit and you end up showing that there is a non-trivial linear combination of W1 to, through Wm that is also giving you the zero vector. Which means that W1 through Wm are not linearly independent. But that's a contradiction because we started by assuming that V1 through Vn and W1 through Wm are basis of V. So that's the argument. So you can, so now that you've replaced one of the vectors in this set by V1, Think of this as your new basis and you do the same argument and replace one of one of these vectors with V2. Okay, now clearly V2 is linearly independent of V1. Okay, so you um, you can use one of the other Wi's to replace it. You don't need to use V1 to replace it because uh, clearly V2, when I write V2 as a linear combination of these vectors here, um, the coefficient of V1 may or may not be zero but one of the other coefficients will certainly be non-zero. And it's that coefficient that you use to rewrite it like this and then say you can replace Wk by uh, some Wk prime by V2. <clears throat> is linearly independent of V1. So we can use one of the um, Wi's. So then we can do then V3, V4, and so on. Okay, but unless M equals N, What we'll have then is we'll have a set which has V1 to Vn and some of the Wi's. And uh, since V1 to Vn span this vector space V, it means that these Wi's can be written as a linear combination of these uh, V1 to Vn. And which means that this new basis that we found is not linearly independent anymore. So there will be some W's left over. Mm. 
but any wi can be expressed as a linear combination of v1 through vn since v1 through vn spans v. So that means that this uh, this new set that we have is no longer a linearly independent set, and uh, this leads to a contradiction. Okay, so that's the proof. Any questions? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, uh, while uh, proceeding with uh, uh, replacing every vi by a wi, you said that if uh, the coefficient of certain wi is zero, to take another wi. But uh, while going from v3 to v4 to vn, if uh, we ran out of the non-zero coefficients, I mean, there is no uh, particular wi left for which uh, uh, its coefficient is non zero and i can replace it by a v yeah so that's not possible because uh, so for example suppose you have replaced v1 v2 and v3 with uh, some of the uh, wis and so now you have a set which has some wis and it has v1 v2 v3 in it now you are looking at replacing v4 V4 is linearly independent of V1, V2, and V3. So you can't express V4 as a linear combination of this set, which contains V1, V2, V3, and the rest of the WIs, but with the non-zero coefficients being only in V1, V2, and V3. Because this V4 is in linearly independent of V1, V2, and V3. So the coefficients of one of the other WIs has to be non-zero. Is that clear? Okay. And that WI okay. can be used to replace. Okay, so um, the, the next thing I must, I want to talk about, um, okay, just maybe one remark. Um, I think I've already mentioned this, but a property of a basis is that if you take any vector in uh, the vector space V uh, and express it as a linear combination of uh, the vectors in the basis, that linear combination is unique. Okay, um, so the next thing I want to talk about, so this is also something you can show, by the way. 
what I'm doing right now is really just reviewing uh, some basic concepts from uh, matrix theory that you must have seen in your undergraduate. So I'm not proving all, all of these results. Uh, once we start discussing um, the new material or the uh, once we get past all this background material, I will generally try to prove every result that I, I put down.